So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session on CDIO implementation. My name is Juha Contio. I'm going to be the chair of, of this session today. We have three presentations in, in this session and, and one hour time. And, and for each, each presentation, we first watch the video and then we have some time to discuss. Here you can see see the three presentations and we will start with the presentation from from uh, University of Navarra and it, it's titled project-based learning implementation collaboration between university and industry and I guess we have uh, have Marta Ormatsapal at least here and uh, we will start with uh, with the video and will will the host play it or is it Marta who is going to play it or how it works here we have it okay so let's start with the video first good morning good afternoon or good evening depending on where you are right now my name is Marta Mazabal I work at the School of Engineering of the University of Navarra in Spain and together with my colleagues Carmen Jaca, Miquel Arizmeni and Carmen Blanco we have developed the following study that I am going to present to you today, and which is entitled Project-Based Learning Implementation, Collaboration Between University and Industry. The outline of this presentation is as follows. First, I will make an introduction and I will explain the objective of this study. Next, I will describe how we conducted the research and finally, I will highlight the results obtained and some brief conclusions. So starting with the introduction, we all know that higher education must promote deep content knowledge, but also professional and personal skills that allow students to face professional life. As Edstrom and Colmos pointed out, project-based learning, PBL, is one of the pedagogical approaches that can be particularly useful. In this method, students develop a project or investigate solutions for a problem. Moreover, collaboration between university and industry is beneficial for the teaching learning process in higher education, especially for technical degrees, as their graduates probably will end up working in industries. So implementing PBL in an industry context has to do with the standard 8 of CDIO, active learning, and the standard 7, integrated learning experiences. This research has been carried out with engineering school students from the University of Navarra. In an internal and external analysis that we carried out in 2018 with the students, alumni and companies, a weakness that came to light in the curriculum was the scarce contact of students with real companies. So the objective of this study is to implement and analyze two experiences of collaboration between university and industry through the implementation of the PBL model in undergraduate and master students. We will explore a student's perception using PBL activities in a company compared to traditional projects, and we will analyze the opinion of the enterprises regarding the university industry collaboration within this type of projects. The two projects, degree and master projects, have followed more or less the same process. In both cases, the projects were carried out in a machine tool company. The students visit the company and have the opportunity to learn about it. During this visit, one of the managers presents them a challenge. In the case of the degree, as the project is not linked to any specific subject, the challenge is quite general, where they have to apply knowledge seen in the different subjects of degree in industrial management engineering. In the case of the master's degree, the challenge is more limited since it has to do with a specific subject and for this reason, the students have a specific sessions that are given by engineers of the company. After working in groups for several weeks, the students present their project to the company managers or company engineers who decide which is the best proposal. In the pictures shown, you can see the students presenting the work and on the other hand, two images of a railroad axle grinding machine designed by the students. And finally, we conducted several surveys among the students and companies. 
Let's move on to the results. We asked students about the content of the activity carried out. Questions designated with an A. Then the collaboration provided by the company with a B. Competences acquired during the project with a C. And the motivation they have experienced when carrying out the work with an M. The blue and gray lines refer to traditional projects while the orange and yellow lines refer to PBL projects in companies. As can be seen, all items score higher in the case of the in-company project than in the case of traditional projects, except for item M6 for degree students. This question said, I am encouraged to consider the possibility of starting my own business in the future. This could be explained by the fact that the students in this degree have specific projects related to entrepreneurship within some of the subjects of the degree. Regarding company surveys, the results obtained in the two companies are similar except for items A5 and B7. In the case of item A5, we ask about the possibility of repeating this experience in other subjects. A possible reason for the low value in the case of the master may be that the project is designed to solve a specific problem to a particular subject, so it would not make sense to repeat this same specific project in other subjects. In the case of B7, managers were asked about having more meetings with the students throughout their project. In the case of the degree, they considered that the students were self-sufficient enough to develop the project in a satisfactory manner without the company managers. And as main conclusions, we can highlight that the experience has been very positive. Both the students and teachers, as well as companies, have positively valued this type of collaboration. Moreover, it is clear that the students value this type of work much better than traditional ones. These results encourage us to continue promoting collaboration between the university and the company in our degrees and masters. Working with a real case of a company and seeing its application is something that the students highlighted. Moreover, the students remarked positively the idea of exposing their solution to the company, receiving feedback from managers and competing against their mates. The students also considered that this type of project is very useful for preparing them for the, their future job, in which the problems of the companies arise in very different ways and are, and are not easy to solve. So that has been all. You can also consult the complete article for more information. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the presentation, Marta. Very interesting and, and clear results, I would say. Any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, one question from Frederick. Do you know why the students are more satisfied doing the project in a company? Yes, well, um, apart from, thank you for the question. Yeah, apart from the, from the results from the survey, uh, we have also asked the, the students individually what they, they thought about the, the project, about doing the project in a company. And all agree that it's quite satisfying to resolve a real problem from, for the company. Because if they do a project, if um, as as teachers, as professors, we ask them to solve a, a project that is not real, they can answer some question, they can think about it, but they don't have that um, interesting or that satisfaction of resolving a real problem from a company. So that's quite motivating for for them, and I think they they learn more because they are more committed to the to the project. Okay, and and another question question from Kamila Klonowska is degree as bachelor degree. Uh, I don't know if it's the same term. I mean, here we have in in Spain we have. Uh, four years of a degree, what we call a degree, and then we have a master. Okay. One so year, two years, master. Okay, so for when you speak about degree, you mainly mean bachelor degree, and then you mm -hmm. have master. It's for undergraduate students. Yes. Okay. And then 
Another question from Tsui Ping. Is this only for the final year project? Uh, no, not really. Well, um, for the undergraduate students, it was they, they were in their fourth year, but it wasn't for their final project. Okay. Normally, in, at our university, they do their final project at a real company, and each student go to a particular company, um, and and they do the project there. But in this case, we as uh, professors organized a specific project in a specific company. And for the undergraduate students, it was not part of a specific subject, but it was like a general, it was a voluntary project that we asked the students, okay, if any one of you want to take this opportunity, it's up to you. Um, and normally the, the company uh, gave them a, like a prize after the, the competition, okay? But it wasn't part of a specific, a specific subject. In the case of the master, yes, it was a specific uh, subject, but it's, it wasn't part of the final project. Okay. And then Prasanna Ilangon asks, were there any concerns regarding the confidential information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yes, in, in some cases, depending on the project, the, the students um, must sign like a confidential contract, okay? That maybe some information they couldn't use it, but in most of the, um, the projects, they, the, the company uh, gave the students the, for, the information that they can't use and that it wasn't that, that information, it wasn't maybe confidential. So in the case of it, it's confidential, we have a, like a contract that the students must, must sign. Yes. Okay. And then there is a question for you, which one? You, you would propose to use. So, so should we use PBL in, in one separate subject or we can use it in, in theory subject? Do you have any suggestion if we want to use PBL in, in the theory subject? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, I think we can, yeah, it can be used in a theory subject. There is no problem with that. The problem in most cases is to find the, the suitable company that, mm -hmm. uh, that want to maybe to propose a, um, a challenge for the students that have to do with, with what you are teaching. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so sometimes that's the, that's the most difficult part to find the, the, the company, but, but yes, it can be a theory subject. Why not? Yes. Okay, and and who looks to, looks up the companies? Is it the university or the students? Okay, in in this case, that it was like uh, a specific challenge that the company proposed. It was the university, the one that that searched for the company. In other subjects, we have other other projects that are the com the the students that the ones that have to search for the company, but. In, in those cases, it's not like a challenge. It's just more a specific project that the, the professors tell the students, okay, you have to search about these about, and about this other thing in one company. So just you know, search for the company, but it's not the company, the one that has to propose a project and then, then the one that has to evaluate. In that case, where we want the company also to, to take part of the evaluation and to propose the challenge is the university, the one that, that searches for the company. Okay. And uh, there are so many questions that are, <laughs> I have to keep on track that which one you have already answered. Uh, I think you already mentioned that, that uh, the companies gave some requirements on, on the topic and uh, and some of them where students have more options to figure out where they focus. I guess that's that's what you explained. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then do you have any tips to define the scope in a way that the project will suit with the, the timelines of the student assignment? Yes. Uh, well, that, that, that sometimes it's a bit uh, tricky. 
so um it's it's a bit difficult like to measure the the timelines no because mm -hmm. uh, when you go to the company and you say okay uh, propose a challenge sometimes the the company doesn't know how much time will will the students have okay? but uh, more or less we tell we tell the company okay for this subject or for this project the students have to dedicate this time okay so the the company is aware of of that time and then the results that the comp the, the students present have to do with with that timeline of course if they have more time they will they will uh, they will spend more time and they will obtain better results but more or less all these because th the thing is that with this type of projects the students are so ent enthusiastic that they can spend um, a lot of time doing the project okay so so it's true that they might spend more time than the one that you have you have assigned them but um, also it's important for example in this case if they have two months to develop the the project to ask them for uh, milestones in the middle of the of the whole project okay so for example in two weeks you have to uh, you have to deliver these this milestone and in two, in the next two weeks you have to deliver this mm -hmm. milestone so little milestones to like to to take the time into account okay and if uh, if you can describe the the size of the project in uh, in european credits credits for example how many credits would this be this project yeah yes well well it depends so for example in in this case it was like a uh, two credits okay but uh, we we are we are going uh, not next course but in the in two years we are going to develop like a whole subject that is going to be a project for the students, for the third year students, they will have to develop a whole project and it's a six, six credits project, okay? And in, in that case, uh, all the students, it's going to be a compulsory subject. We are going to search for several, several companies and uh, they will have like different topics. And all the students, we have eight different engineering uh, degrees and in those projects uh, the all the students from the different engineering degrees will be mixed up in a in the same project okay <laughs> okay thank you we we need to move on soon so marta maybe maybe if you can still give the key takeaways for for the audience from your study if you summarize one or two things that they mm -hmm. they can take away with this. Yeah, okay, so thank you. Yeah, uh, well, I invite you to, to test these, these uh, well, these uh, project-based learning with, with industry because it's, um, it's really satisfying. And, and you see that the students learn a lot and also the companies are uh, really willing to collaborate with us. And the, the companies have told us, okay, uh, we have proposed the students this challenge and we as a company didn't think uh, about some solutions that the, that the students have uh, shown us. So that, that is, I think it's, it's quite, quite, quite good. Thank you. Okay, then we move on to the next presentation. And um, this one is uh, from Sweden, from Christian Saad, Saad University. And uh, it, it's going to be Frederick Frisk, who is presenting or speaking. And then the title, as you can see in the screen now, is, is also doing something to do with, uh, with project-based and, and, and uh, developing curricula, I guess. Okay, so let's take a look on, on the video. My name is Fredrik Frisk and I'm a senior lecturer at Kronstadt University together with, with my colleagues Camilla Klonowska and Daniel Einarsson. 
We are all working at the computer science department. During this presentation, we will discuss the last semester for one of the four study programs that are held by the department. The last semester on the bachelor program in computer science specializing in IoT, the students are following two courses, the system engineering course, which is a project oriented course and the thesis course. Our problem during the years is that the students do not finish the degree thesis on time. As you can see here in the plot, the blue bars corresponding to the system engineering course, there is always more students finish this, this course. We have the same amount of students in the thesis course, but they are actually postponing this course. It seems like they are prioritizing the system engineering course. During the last semester of the program, the students are, are following two courses, the system engineering course and degree project course, as mentioned before. These two courses have been run in parallel since 2015, but originally these courses were two independent courses. Regarding the system engineering course, the aim and purpose of this course is prototype development of a system the system is comprised by both hardware and software development. The students work uh, independently. There is regular contacts with the supervisor, with mandatory meetings, and the product mo model of this course is agile. Regarding the degree product course, the students uh, work independently with a scientific research. They have to investigate some research questions that they have planned for in a product plan and that could actually be both theoretical and empirical research study. Our solution to avoid delayed presentation of the thesis is to synchronize the two courses. That is, students work with the same product in both the thesis course and the system engineering course. The student starts with conceiving the product, which is done in a thesis course by writing a product plan. The plan needs to be approved by the examiner before continuing, and several research questions is formulated. These are the foundation of the academic research that is conducted in the thesis course. The students can now define the technical part of the prototype system based on the research question. A requirement list is written together with a lecturer in the system engineering course, the requirement list is then approved by the lecturer in the same course. Now the students are free to work more independently in both courses. For the system engineering course, the design of the prototype starts in parallel. The students work with a thesis conducting literature study, research related work, helping them answering the research question. In the middle of this, Semester, the students are encouraged to present part of the written thesis, that is background literature research and methodology. During the semester in the system engineering course, the students need to present the prog progress of the prototype work in several mandatory meetings. Simultaneously, as the students present the, th me uh, the thesis, the design phase is iteratively progressing towards the implementation phase during the semester in the system engineering course. When the prototype fulfills the requirement list, the system engineering course is finished and the prototype can be used for evaluation in the thesis course. The students can now focus on getting the final results for the thesis using the prototype as a tool and then completing the thesis for the oral presentation. Here is an example of a system that, that has been evaluated in the thesis course and the prototype system has been built in the system engineering course. Down to the left you can see the title of the pro product, it's pre pretty theoretical. And uh, to the right you can see that uh, here is the equipment that was built by the students. So the problem at hand was to, to construct some algorithm and evaluate algorithms for measuring heart rate variability. And 
doing that, they, the students need to acquire some real data. So they built the system. They could be able to record the heart rate from some wristbands, and they also had a reference system that they could <clears throat> rely on to see that if the algorithm was giving reasonable results. We can see from the result of synchronizing these both courses that uh, we have a, a positive effect, that we have more students finishing the thesis course in time. This opportunity for the students to synchronize the courses has been uh, available since 2018, and it has been more common for the students to choose this possibility. As you can see from the students, feedback, they think it's a good idea. There is also some concern that there are a process of being approved both for the thesis project plan and for the requirement list of the system engineering. And the students could feel a little bit st stuck and, and uh, a little bit frustrated that they will not finish in time. But the result shows that there is more students that are finishing in time. Okay, thank you for the presentation. It, it's time for questions. Okay, Frederick, uh, when the students select the topic for their thesis, uh, where does the, does the topic come from? Do they have connections with the industry or, or they made up the topic by themselves or from, from the faculty or how, how the topics come up? Uh, all three, I would say, I would say, we try to promote them to go out to in indus industry. So that yeah. ha happens. We we have some connections with industry, so we can ask the uh, students take contact with them, or they the industry have a list of of theses that they want some product work to be done. It could also be some some students actually. Uh, we want to do something by by ourselves. We want maybe we want to start a company or something like that. That happens a few times a year also or it could also be students that they have I, I want to do I want to build some specific stuff and evaluate that as well so it's I would say as it is now it's driven by the students own interest okay. we want them to promote more to to companies but I would say that uh, the last one, it's, I think it's around maybe 40%, something like that, of, of the products that are outside in companies. Okay. And, and, and are the thesis project typically individual project, or is it allowed to do group work project as well? Uh, the, uh, the thesis project is, is mainly, I would say, that the standard is two by two. That okay. that is a little. We promote them to do it two by two by two, but it happens that there are individual students, but no more than two students. Yeah. And then in the other course, that is, it is an independent course. I would say that the the system in engineering course that's all about building a prototype. In that course, the students are allowed to work up to four students. But I would say that it has a tendency more and more that it, they end up in group of two because they are the same group in system engineering and in, in the thesis okay. course. Okay. And, and I guess that all this is happening during one semester. Yes. Because it's two 15 credit courses. Yes. yes. So for one semester, they do the, both thesis and, and the system engineering. Yes, so, so it, yes. it is, a, one could say, one project. It is full time for two students during one complete sem semester. So it's yeah. quite big project, actually. Yeah. And, and, and for, for your case, the 15 ECDS, it, it's, it's quite big course, or, or do you call it as, as a module? or? It is, I would say, this standard course size at our our uh, at this uh, education is seven and a half credits. Okay. 
So, so these are two big courses in the in the yeah. end. Yeah. So it is, I, I would say that it is it is a very different semester compared to the previous semester because they are, have two project courses that they have to work individually okay. with a supervisor. Yeah. And actually there is a question from Prasanna uh, that how many courses do you think is ideal to synchronize? Uh, I, yeah, that could, I, I would say, I think it's ideal. Uh, it, it's ideal to synchronize. This is all the courses in the last semester. I think that that is a good, good idea. So we haven't tried yet. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and Josep wants to know that, that if you can explain a bit about the student comments that, that what, if you can, can give some background on, on the student comments that, that Joseph said that I didn't understand that uh, comments totally. Uh -huh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> one could say that they, they are wor worried that they will not finish in, in time and they are worried that they are, they need to have the thesis approved. They have to have a pr approved product plan in the beginning to start the thesis. And if, if that product plan for the thesis is not approved, they cannot start the system engineering prototype built. And in that course, they also need to have a requirement list to start the prototype. So that is the worry. I would say that is my understanding of, of the feedback. They are worried in the beginning and then, then they are glad in the end that, yeah, this worked out well. We, we finished it in time. Yeah. And at the end, wasn't it so that, that now, nowadays more students finish these two courses yes. on time? Rather, than earlier you had the systems engineering finished on time and the thesis was delayed. Yes, yes, exactly. And that, I would say, two reasons for that, that they... Uh, yeah, maybe maybe one reason to be sure that the system engineering course has the possibility to, to be examined during this semester. There is an extra opportunity for the thesis to be examined during the autumn. Okay. So it's so if they have so that is an obvious choice of the students then to, to choose from. I would say. Yes. And then there's one question from from Sate that are the instructors of the two courses same instructions, different or overlapped, or how the, the lecturing or, or teacher work is, is divided, distributed in these two? It's uh, to, I wouldn't say 100%, but almost 100%, it is the same t teacher working as a supervisor for the project in the system engineering course and as a supervisor for the thesis but it's another person that is the examiner for the thesis. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for Frederick? No, I can't see any more questions. And I think you have explained quite well that, that what kind of exercise you have done. And, and at least I, I can see a lot of good values for, for combining these two. And, uh, and uh, it was really nice to hear the results from your university. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's move to the final presentation on, on this session. And uh, it's then presentation from, from Nottingham Trent University by Pedro Sikas. Okay, so we have the video there, so let's start. Hello, my name is Pedro Sikas and I'm a senior lecturer at Nottingham Trent University in the UK. I'll be talking about the first term of a second year module, uh, which is an introduction to industrial design and product case studies. Generally, the engineering courses at uh, Nottingham Trent are split into three main sections. Uh, that is some core engineering modules uh, that all engineering students have to take, 
some specialist modules uh, depending on the type of engineering that the students are uh, studying and then some practical and project-based modules. Uh, the module in this presentation falls within that category and it's the uh, first term of a second year module. For this module, the learning outcomes include uh, sourcing industry relevant, relevant information uh, from scientific literature to inform design and manufacture of engineering products, to review and evaluate information related to end user needs, and materials and component properties, industry standards and methods of fabrication, including knowledge of industrial manufacturing process, economic viability and environmental concerns, uh, formulating and uh, manufacturing engineering solutions to overcome discipline specific engineering problems using standard engineering solutions and utilizing digital methods in the design and fabrication of engineering products. To that end, the students were assigned to teams based on their course of study. So for instance, uh, electronic engineers would form uh, one or two teams, uh, biomedical, sports and so on. Um, and each team would be free to choose, research and evaluate three products with some relevance to their field. They wouldn't actually have the physical product at hand, uh, but they were free to use um, any, any uh, resource, online research, uh, check um, reviews by users, etc. Um, then each team would have to either choose one of the products they analyzed to improve in at least one aspect, for instance, function, cost, sustainability of manufacturing, or decide to fully design a new product of their own, um, again, with some relevance to their discipline. Um, at the end of the term, they would have to produce a physical demonstrator and present that uh, based on their design. Uh, a demonstrator would, have, would not need to be a fully functioning prototype, but it would have to be some physical um, product uh, with, uh, with some functionality that could act as a, as a proof of concept for their idea. The projects included uh, gateways, uh, which were um, kind of checkpoints within the duration of the project. And there were uh, semi-formal opportunities for feedback. So distinct times uh, within the, the project where the, the students would talk with, them, with the tutors and explain um, um, what they have done and what they plan to do. And they would either then get a green light to proceed to the next stage or uh, being offered suggestions and improvements that they could make. Um, the, the students were allowed to work at their own pace. However, for each gateway, um, there was a recommended time period. So the first gateway was uh, for the students to, um, to present their analysis of, ex of existing products. And the recommended time for that was uh, four weeks. Um, the second gateway was the choice of product. Uh, so to choose one of the products that they analyzed and, and uh, suggest improvements uh, or a general idea for a new design. Now, the recommended uh, time for that was two weeks after Gateway 1. And then for the third gateway, they would have to have had uh, completed uh, the detailed development of their, of their new designs, uh, prepare a presentation um, and the demonstrator. And they would have to present that um, uh, within 20 minutes uh, slots. Um, the whole event was organized as a kind of an open trade show style exhibition uh, where the students would present their, um, their project and receive feedback to, by, from their peers or from the tutors. Uh, students chose uh, various products to, to analyze uh, from kind of um, automatic vacuum cleaners to injection delivery systems to um, uh, computer cooler systems or um, uh, hearing aids. The students decided to design or improve various products. Uh, some examples are shown in the slide. Uh, on the left, the electronic engineering students decided to make a kind of robotic companion, um, which uh, which was uh, which included. Um, obstacle avoidance um, system 
and and also it could be controlled. They also made a phone app uh, with which they could uh, control and navigate um, the the robot. And the aim was to also add uh, features like um, a vacuum cleaner in the bottom, so it could also perform tasks like clean the house, uh, etc. Uh, on the right, the biomedical engineering students um, took an injection delivery device and they added uh, a light uh, signal and a sound signal uh, upon delivery of injection. So the idea here was that if the person that is uh, being injected doesn't want to look at it, uh, then they would have an additional signal to inform them when the injection was, was over. Um, they also, other students did other, other products. Uh, there was um, a PC, a laptop cooling system. There was um, energy harvesting uh, system for prosthetics. Um, there was um, the, the sports engineering students um, uh, included um, sort of um, uh, pressure sensors on a wheelchair, an athletic wheelchair seat, to help with training and 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 others. Overall, the module provided with projects uh, that included a variety of tasks, some more practical and some more theoretical, um, and that allowed students to either um, take tasks that for, they felt more comfortable with or develop in new areas. Um, this um, module uh, allowed also students to draw skills and knowledge from other modules, for instance, uh, modules where they were taught about microcontrollers or uh, they were taught about CAD. Um, peer interactions were encouraged, um, so there was no competitive element deliberately introduced in the module between teams. Uh, so if, for instance, some uh, biomedical students wanted to do something Want to include something uh, that was more on the electronic side. They were allowed to discuss with their colleagues. Uh, however, outsourcing was not allowed. And generally, um, the variety of tasks provided the students with uh, the ability to be active in their learning and, and uh, go in their own pace. A lot of our students work in parallel, so this would allow them to have a flexible uh, time schedule. And um, in general, we received uh, very positive feedback. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer and discuss. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Any questions, comments? Well, I can start. You, you mentioned that there were students from different fields of engineering participating in this project. Uh, which uh, which fields of engineering joined this effort? Yes, so we had um, electronic engineers, biomedicals, sports engineers. Um, yeah, I, I think we had this this three. And then when when they did the project, were they working with uh, with engineers from different fields, or did all all of them made the project in their own field? Um, so okay, they I, had to, sorry. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, um, so the, 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 they were assigned to teams that were within their field. And okay. they had to choose products that had some relevance uh, to, to their field. Um, but they were all in the same room. So we didn't add um, a competitive element between the teams. Uh, because we wanted them to, to talk to each other. So, for instance, when, when the sports engineers were trying to develop like the seat for the, uh, for the wheelchair, uh, they could talk with the teams that might have been electronic engineers and, and get some information or some help to help them debug uh, and then vice versa. Um, but, yeah, no outsourcing, though, uh, was allowed. Have, have you thought about making making the project groups in such a way that they, they in the first hand, have students of, from, of different background? Yes. Um, so we, we had done this in, in a different, different module. Um, 
yeah, so they're the, the it is, it's great to have them collaborate uh, when mm -hmm. it works well. However, when it comes to a choice of product or a choice of design, then if you have more students from one discipline, they might dominate the choice uh, and the others might complain a bit. Uh, like this, this is not relevant to what I'm interested in and all that. Uh, so yeah, it's a balance. So on one hand, yes, engineers have to learn how to, to communicate with engineers of other, other fields. Uh, or in general, people from other fields. Uh, on the other hand, it, the, the relevance must be maintained. And also, um, so let's say that in a team, you have somebody that is an electronics engineer. Uh, then whatever has to do with electronics might by default go to that person, for instance. So whatever has to do with biomedical might go to the biomedical, but that doesn't allow the people to develop. Uh, so... Okay. In a case where a biomedical will have to learn a little bit of coding uh, to to do the project, there it develops. Uh, so there is this balance. Uh, that, That's that, a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, there's two, three questions on on the chat. First of all, Joseph asks that uh, what adjustments did you have to make for for the COVID? Yeah, that was before the COVID, um, and um, then the module uh, changed. Um, also, I gave it, so I was leading that module, then somebody else took it over, and I think they they ran it um, kind of virtually. Um, that is generally what we did in, in the department. So we, we had to do, um, we used CAD simulation, and um, and there is so like things like Tinker Cut, where you can kind of simulate the microcontroller and then still make your point. It's not the same, uh, and I think the students in, in enjoy uh, actually this building and physical prototyping and all and all that. But yes, th th this is the kind of things we did um, uh, for for COVID. Okay. And uh, another question from Zui Bing. Uh, did you observe some challenges in terms of guiding this interdisciplinary student team? Yes. Um, so modules like these are very resource intensive. Uh, so with, with me, there was two more lecturers. And also we had the technicians helping. And um, because it's not a fixed fixed set of tasks that the students will do, they might come up with anything, and there's problems in the in in the course. Uh, so yeah, it, it was uh, demanding in terms of of resources from the uh, university side as well. And uh, the the cohort was thirty five students, and it kept us well busy. Okay. And uh, and how you fund this project? That was a question from Prasanna. Yes. Um, the teams had a little budget and it was, I think, 60 pounds at the mm -hmm. time. And, and also there is resources in, in the department. So there were things that we, we bought and we reuse. Uh, so there is a, a cost, an initial cost for running these this kind of modules. And then there is a small budget. Uh, so I think how many teams were there? Were six teams by sixty pounds. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's a modest budget, but it also gives them a sense of they have to be frugal and, and make the most of what they have. It's creativity. It's, it sparks creativity. And and you you said during your presentation that uh, that the students have to pick the topics, three different products from. And, and then start pick one of those at least and, and develop it further. Uh, once they develop the, the product further, did, uh, did they have some connection with the, with the company, the industry? And, uh, and as a continuing question to that, that, how much you communicated the results to the industry or the company? We haven't as part of the design of the mm. of the module uh, the students of course are free to pursue 
their mm-hmm. ideas. But um, yeah, we, we, we weren't able to do that for this module. Uh, even though we have, sorry, we have other modules uh, where industry involvement is, um, is pursued. Um, so at the end of the, of the first and second year, we also have a three week bigger, uh, fancier uh, kind of project where, where industry is invited. Uh, but yeah, for this one, there wasn't any communication, at least not from us. Okay. And uh, then a question from Tiravat. Uh, is it necess- necessary that the project is the product improvement or new design? And uh, in your opinion, can we get the intended learning outcomes of the project that just repeat the good product in the market? Mm. Well, I think part of what the intention was there was not just to implement something, but also to to kind of try and spark the creativity, try to get them to uh, kind of lateral thinking, and and try and, and that was also the point why why uh, analyze more than one product. Mm. So the idea was to take elements and and try and mix them and and try and explore how things can be improved in some way. And it's rare that a product uh, will will be perfect. Uh, so there will be some aspect that they they, they can uh, improve. So yeah, I think that the purpose there was to try and and uh, encourage creativity. Uh, as well as, I mean, if if the profession is changing as well, uh, in, so engineering might be changing, so repetitive tasks might be disappearing. Uh, so maybe these aspects that are difficult to be replaced still, mm. uh, maybe we can promote those. That, that was the idea. Okay. And then Fanny wants to know that how big or advanced the idea has to be as a project and, and then making a prototype? Uh, the, the time is limited. Uh, so this is within a term. Um, here is more to, to be able to um, have a proof of concept mm. uh, at best. Obviously, a, a full working product would be great. Uh, but yes, the, um, it is mainly to, to act as a proof of concept, in just enough to, to show their, their idea, to showcase their idea. Mm. And how many easy ideas was this project? How many credits the students would get from this? Um, so it's it was the first first of two uh, first of three terms um, of a second year module. So it was ten credit points out yeah. of one hundred and twenty. Okay. Yeah. Good. And and where? Well, where there's some kind of, of criteria that what kind of project you accept. Or is it open that, that any any product any product that the student no well the, there was moderation uh, so exactly that's why we had those gateways so those those okay. points within the project and those were obviously every week we would all be in the lab and discussing and all that but though there was kind of three distinct points throughout the project where all the tutors would be with one team and okay. then we would discuss with the team. So it, it would, it would and that would moderate the direction and make sure that that is possible within the time and with the resources that, that were there. Okay. And, and you mentioned that at the end of the course, you had uh, some kind of open trade show. And was that uh, open for, for other students as well or only for the students in the course? Oh, yeah, I mean, the, the other colleagues were invited, like, oh, we have the end of this project, you want to stop by and, and talk to the students and have a look. Uh, so, yeah, it, w- it was generally open. And then, so students from teams could go around and, and, and have a look. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was generally open. And, and you said that you didn't have any, any kind of competi- competitive element there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, not deliberately. Uh, okay. It happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, instinctively the, the, the students will develop that, but it wasn't, 
it wasn't uh, uh, done from us. So we didn't have a prize or a, a grand, uh, yes, um, thing about it. But yes, there was obviously some competition between the teams, uh, mm-hmm. but we didn't add that element deliberately. Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? No? Okay. So we still have all, all the presenters here, Marta, Frederick, and, and, and Petra. So if you have anything to ask from, from them, they are still with us for, for some minutes here. No more comments. But I must say that, that uh, we have heard three very good presentations here and, and three very good good examples of of implementing CDIO activities there. And, and uh, I must must admit that I didn't have time to read your papers, but after your presentation, I have to do that. And, and, and very good, good and interesting talks that you, you gave, gave us here. And uh, uh, if no more questions or, or comments, I say thank you for the presenters. Thank you for the audience. It has was, was very nice session and, and uh, hope you enjoy the next sessions as well. And the next session will start and it's going to be the keynote session and the time for that. What's the time for the keynote? It's happening in, uh, let's check, uh, in 15, Oh, in, in about 20 minutes. So then we have the keynote session. So hope to see you all, all in there again. But now, thank you. Bye-bye.